irrespective of the time of this printed citation, the proverbial truth lying hidden behind has been well known and proven ever since mankind has started achieving success. It is the incredible story of Basant Kumar Birla and Sarla Birla which undoubtedly proves the fact again. A story of rare courage, resilience and utmost determination of the couple to give a permanent place to the Birla Empire in the annals of history. The seeds of success laid by Ghansham Das Birla flourished under the leadership of his son and daughter-in-law to a legacy of its own. The Birlas could be described as the Rockefellers of India, just as the name Rockefeller is scattered all over America on various institutions. Similarly, the name Birla is spread far and wide over educational and medical institutions and temples in all parts of India. It all began 72 years back when Basant first set his eyes on Sarla, a feisty and progressive young girl. And through the years, Sarla walked beside Basant every step of the way. Sarla Birla, born on the auspicious day of Bhaiya Duj on the 23rd of November 1924 at Kuchaman in the state of Rajasthan, is the daughter of Savitri Biani and Brijlal Biani a respected freedom fighter and the first finance minister of the state of Madhya Pradesh in independent India. I was in but then we came to Akola. My father was very much educated and he went to see Akola and then we all went to in Akola. Akola we had very good re reaction of all the people. My father built a very big house and all of us stayed there. Now he, he was called Vidarbha Kesri. Kesri means lion and Vidarbha. Vidar, Vidar. He did very well there. Sarla Birla completed her primary and secondary education from the government high school, Akola, Maharashtra. And my father was very particular that everything should be very tip top and all his shoes also polished twice, thrice. <laughs> he was very particular. The medium of instruction was Marathi. She acquired fluency nonetheless in both Marathi and Hindi. English in those days was taught from class 6. She received immense encouragement from her family for acquiring competency in the English language and literature. This not only opened doors to the world outside, but refined her abiding interest in the languages, which remains to this day. An acknowledged linguist, she continues even at her present age of 90 to seriously pursue proficiency in the French language and literature. School to Sarla Birla was not only acquisition of knowledge, it was also about discipline, punctuality and participation in extracurricular activities. Badminton khelte thi, kho kho khelte thi and rowing karte thi aur swimming to karte thi. Sab cheez mere father ne driving bhi sikhai mere ko. Bahut cheez sikhai. And he wanted to wanted us to learn more and more and more. She had a deep interest in Odissi dancing in which she was trained. At a time when girls were mostly kept at home, involved in homemaking activities, Sarla Birla rode a bicycle to school. Later, she was admitted to Pune's prestigious Ferguson College. Her ability to view the independence movement then on in the country, in her own perspective, marked her transformation into a remarkable personality. While Sarla was at Pune, her would-be husband, Basant Kumar Birla reached the age of 19 and it was decided 
that it was time for him to get married. He insisted on an educated and English-speaking bride and he was not against intercaste marriage also, whereas the family was more tuned into the background and cultural sensibilities. The word about the marriage was spread around in their circle of friends and relatives. Jamna Lal Bajaj, an industrialist and a philanthropist who was a close associate of Mahatma Gandhi, zeroed in on Sarla, daughter of Savitri Biani and Brijlal Biani, a prominent Congress leader and Gandhiji's trusted lieutenant. A fascinating chapter in her life was her first meeting with the youthful B.K. Birla. The young man may have been chosen by her elders to be her groom. However, for Sarla Birla, merely acceding to a family's direction was not reason enough to undergo the Saat Peras. She wanted to get to know her proposed life partner personally before committing herself. I was studying in Pune. My father-in-law, he was in Vardha, Bapu's ashram. So he called me from Pune. I came and I said, uh, he said that we have finalized the year, but we haven't got your invitation. Uh, 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 so I said, but how can I give you any definite reply unless I see the boy? So he said, oh, have you seen the boy? I said, no, I have So he, she, he said that he had gone to Mumbai and you had come there. I said, there were so many boys. I didn't know who. <laughs> so, then Mr. Didi Belakut came to see me at the station. I went there. But I said, now next time if you call me, only when my holidays are there. So he said, Ki, tell me where are your holidays. Hmm. So I said, I can come on the 9th. And we went on the 9th. So then we talked to Babu. Bapu. Bapu talked to us and he said, you are very modern and they are very orthodox. So do you think you'll be able to adjust? I said, yes, of course. Then he called both of us. Then he said, don't hurry, go in that room and decide. Then let me know. So we went in another room. Then we came, yes, we are ready. Bapu said, think twice before giving it. And then, then I thought, uh, my father-in-law was in Delhi. So as soon as we came, they gave a telephone. So Mr. Villa said, I have to inform my father that we are engaged. <laughs> it was funny. Once the consent was given, the engagement was held in November 1941 and solemnized by Mahatma Gandhi and Kasturba Gandhi in the presence of C. Raja Gopalachari, Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Sardar Ballabhai Patel, and Jamna Lal Bajaj. Although the family was initially a little apprehensive about Sarla because of her progressiveness, very soon she became very close to her father-in-law Ghansham Dasji. And for him, she was like the daughter. Soon after the marriage in 1942, Birla aggressively expanded the business by venturing into new areas and shaped the course of modern Indian business history. He expanded Century Textile and set up Century Enka, the two textile behemoths, which later became blue chip companies in the stock exchanges. During all this time, Sarla Birla was with him. There are several instances where they were found to be visiting their manufacturing facilities or proposed sites where the next construction work was about to begin. Basant Kumar always respected Sarla's opinions and she actively took part in the expansion of the Birla empire in the making. During this period, she also took several trips to countries abroad. In spite of so many cultural differences, she managed to make her stay there comfortable. Be it food habits or clothing, the adaptability of this lady was commendable. In 
In the course of time, the couple had three children. The late Aditya Vikram, their only son, and the two daughters, Jayashri and Manjushri. I have one son and two daughters. And we love them and they love us. And they are really, really, really precious. She was a caring mother for all of them, but at the same time taught them to be disciplined, courageous and hardworking. With a mother like Sarla, no wonder that son Aditya charted a new path for Indian industry by creating an empire beyond the country's shores with a host of companies in Southeast Asia. Later on, her grandson Kumar Mangalam Birla took the baton ever forward. Yet he owes much of his learning to his grandmother, Sarla Birla. In the Birla household, where enterprise, culture and convention ruled side by side, Sarla Birla could have opted to exclusively play the role of a homemaker. A homemaker she certainly is. But her life's mission would have been incomplete if the philosophies that she had meticulously absorbed in her growing up years were not put into practice. That she has carved out a niche of her own in the spheres of education, art, culture and philanthropy testify to her capability of acting on the principles that she had imbibed while at the same time being a part of the Birla family ethos. She realized that an independent India would not progress unless exposed to quality education. While seeking admission for their only son, Aditya Vikram Birla, they felt the lack of an appropriate one and decided to build the first ever school under their patronage. It was established as Mahadevi Birla Shishu Vihar. Later on, in partnership with her husband BK Birla, she laid the foundations of some 45 educational institutions like Ashok Hall Group of Schools, Mahadevi Birla World Academy, GD Birla Center for Education, BK Birla Institute of Engineering and Technology, Birla Institute of Management, Technology, Greater Noida and Bhuvaneshwar, Birla Vidya Mandir Nainital and Birla Vidya Niketan New Delhi etc. for imparting quality education. Over 100,000 students are now educated at these institutions today. As a mother, she also taught her daughters Jayashri and Manjushri the core of her philosophy, of which she is a firm believer. This teaching from their mother enabled the daughters with a much better understanding of the idea and subsequently they started taking active part in the flawless running of these institutions. Till date, they stay by their mother and jointly take care of the day-to-day -day functioning of these places to ensure that quality education is being offered to the students. My kids, my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, they are all assets for us. Her upbringing had instilled in her the wisdom to appreciate works of art, whether painting, sculptures, music, literature or photography. She has been so very inclined to these finer elements of life and creativity that she has gradually become an ardent patron and follower of such fascinating pieces of art history. There would be very few artists indeed who would not have benefited from Sarla Birla's appreciation and watchful eye like Bikash Bhattacharjo, Pandit Yashraj, Jogin Chaudhary, Tanusri Shankar, Shivkumar Sharma, and many more. Her collection of Indian art, including those displayed at the Birla Academy of Art and Culture, would rank amongst India's most distinguished private collections. The Sangeet Kala Mandir Kolkata and the Birla Academy of Art and Culture Kolkata, famous in their own right, owe their origins to the efforts of Sarla Birla and BK Birla. 
she was deeply fascinated by Mahadevi Verma and Dr. Harivansh Rai Bachchan's writings. She has been very close to renowned personalities like Lata Mangeshkar, Asha Bhosle, Devanand and many more. She was also closely associated with statesmen like Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, Sardar Ballav Bhai Patel, Nobel laureate Dalai Lama and many more. Philanthropy is second nature to Sarna Billa. The contributions of her as but for all of us, irrespective of caste, creed or culture, life puts forward certain obstacles which turn out to become the most tragic incident one could ever experience in a lifetime. In 1995, Basant Kumar Birla and Sarla Birla's only son, Aditya Vikram, passed away. The loss was insurmountable for the couple and probably more for the mother. My son is... He has expanded so much, so much, so much. But being an exceptionally religious person, she drew strength from her immense faith and belief in divine intervention to cope with such a devastating loss. A firm believer in karma, one of Sarla Birla's favorite quotes is that you get in life what you give. At 90, her activities continue to be all-encompassing. While being a caring wife, a loving mother, a fond grandmother and a doting great-grandmother, she keeps a keen eye on all the institutions she has founded as a mother would with her grown-up children. Sarla Birla is an example of a person who despite having lived a full life, does not consider her thirst for knowledge to have come to an end. She is still a learner and in her words, her process of learning is not yet complete. I would love, love to do some more, but now I'm old and I can't do <laughs> So I just imagine that I'm doing this event. Her lifelong conviction of remaining on the right side of life makes all of us optimistic to believe that even living beyond a century would not dare to dampen her ever-indomitable spirit. <laughs> <laughs>